In fact, under Rick Perry, our state, in the 10 years that he's been governor, we have created more minimum wage jobs than every other state in the union combined. Every other state in the union combined. Minimum wage jobs. Let's look at these things. Minimum wage jobs. We're talking about a phenomenal uh, display here of jobs that are just tinkling down on the working poor in our country. It's a miserly disgrace, the notion of minimum wage in our country today, as is the very idea of that phrase, working poor. Isn't that strange? Where is the ethic in work ethic that says you can work full time and still be poor in our nation? 725 an hour, that's the minimum wage. That is basically $1,200 a month. Try to make a go on that. Paying rent, paying food, paying, you know, just your, your basic utilities, uh, transportation, et cetera. It eats all that up in a hurry. $1,200 uh, a month. Yet, here in Florida, uh, your legislature tried to knock down that waitress's wage from 4.65 an hour, which is a sub-minimum wage to start with, to $2.15 an hour. I mean, just puts the dumb and dumbfounding, doesn't it? That they wouldn't even accept that. They didn't succeed. But meanwhile, Washington continues to cut off hedge fund billionaires with the lowest tax rate on the books. The top 10 hedge fund operators in 2010, they averaged $180 million each a year in pay, $180 million personal pay for them. That works out to $84,000 an hour for them. Yet, they won't even hold a hearing in Washington on a proposal to raise the minimum wage to $10 an hour. Luckily, we have uh, Representative Bill Young over here to <laughs> explain this for us. Bill over in St. Petersburg, July 4th this year, July 4th parade. He was asked by a young citizen, said, uh, well, what about this? Uh, there's a bill in Congress to raise the minimum wage to $10 an hour. Do you support that? And Bill Young said, probably not. The young guy said, well, 10 bucks, that, that would give us a living wage. And Young said, how about getting a job? <laughs> young guy said, well, I have one. <laughs> and Young said, well, why do you want that benefit? Get a job. <laughs> you look at a guy like Bill Young and you think, 100,000 sperm and you were the fastest. This is the kind of fight that we are in. And it's not enough for these financial vandals to knock us down economically. They also want to then shut us off and tie us down from even protesting their narcissistic avarice and arrogance, from the disgraceful and wasteful drug war that Obama has inexplicably continued and even intensified to the unconscionable militarization of America's police forces, arming our local police with tanks and drones and unreasonable, abominable powers of search and seizure. Our lawmakers and our courts are turning America's essential First Amendment rights from something to be cherished into something to be marginalized. Your own city attorney here in Tampa, as this Republican convention approached, said troublemakers will not be tolerated. Well, excuse me, but you don't have to 
being who's who to know what's what. <laughs> the real troublemakers are the coke-headed billionaires, the corporate lobbyists, and the pusillanimous, sycophantic congressional critters and governors inside the hall, not those outside of the hall. <laughs> They're the ones causing the trouble. Who's watching them? I love it that your governor is allowing the insiders to carry loaded pistols. But outsiders, the protesters, as hoi polloi, are not allowed to have water pistols on the streets of Tampa. Where's the NRA when we need them? <laughs> Only criminals will have water pistols. <laughs> the same needless, outrageous stuff is taking place in Charlotte, by the way, up here, what will be the Democratic Convention. This is why Lily Tomlin has said, no matter how cynical you get, it is almost impossible to keep up. <laughs> and this is why your radio station is so crucial. You know, the opposite of courage is not cowardice, it's conformity. Just go along. As we say in the title of this book, uh, even a fish can swim in the flow. Tonight's event is not merely a clever play on words, free speech zone, but a call to action. Our people's rights and liberties will not be taken from us in one big coup, but in a steady drip, drip, drip of exactly what's happening here in Tampa this week. William O. Douglas uh, said it years ago, if I can find it here. Yes, here it is. Said that just as nightfall doesn't come at once, Neither does oppression. In both instances, there is a twilight. And it is at such twilight that we all must be aware of change in the air, however slight, lest we become unwitting victims of the darkness. WMNF is the light in the darkness that is presently descending upon us. Which, which brings us to uh, us, <laughs> you, and me. Uh, if we want a better society, a society that is based on fairness and justice and equal opportunity for all. We can't wait on the powers that be to do it for us. They're the ones doing it to us. So we, it, it's not just the, the, the coke-headed GOP, by the way, that's doing this to us. Too many of my party's leader, and I come to you as a guy who was elected two terms in statewide office, much to the amusement of the people of Texas, uh, in that state, as a proud Democrat. But I gotta say, too many of my party's leaders are weaker than Canadian hot sauce when it comes to standing up <laughs> to what we need to be standing up for. You know, I, I've actually, uh, see what you think of this, I've, I've come up with this idea. I would allow the drug companies, they owe us something, right? The drug corporations. I would let them conspire, just get them all together, uh, Pfizer and uh, Merck and all the rest, and let them get in the back room, they could conspire, and come up with a drug. It would be a Viagra that would strengthen the backbone of the Democrats in Washington, D.C. <laughs> That would be a good thing. For more than four hours, by the way. <laughs> so my message to you, and I'm sure you know, you're wondering what it is right now, and that is, uh, it's up to us. It always has been. Patti Smith has that great song, people have the power, the power to dream, to rule, to wrestle the world from fools. That's our challenge. That's what we're involved in. Yet, I know that a lot of people 
who listen even to your radio station, they'll say, well, you know, uh, uh, politics, it's, it's so, gosh, it's so confusing, it's so dangerous, I, I don't know, it, it, I, 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 I'm uncomfortable getting involved with it. It, it, it is even sometimes it's disgusting. But, you know, Butch Hancock, some of y'all might know him, he's a great uh, singer-songwriter out of Austin, Texas. Butch uh, was on, DeMarco and I had that radio show, and, and we would have people like Butch on, have some musicians periodically, and, and Butch is, a, is, is part of a bunch of guys out of Lubbock, uh, Jimmy Dale Gilmore and Joe Ely, and they formed a group called the Flatlanders, and they, and they, they came in there, and uh, so, so Butch was on our show, and, and he was trying to explain how difficult it was to grow up in Lubbock, Texas, in this just hardcore, evangelical, um, you can't even dance kind of religious uh, culture that they had there. And he said that they would tell us that sex is the most disgusting, nastiest, filthiest thing on earth, and you should save it for someone you love. <laughs> Explains a lot about Lubbock, I don't know <laughs> what else it was from. He said, well, here we go. Nothing magic about all of this. You gotta just keep on keeping on. And that's the message that WMNF puts out uh, every uh, single day. I was, I was up in, a couple of years ago, I was up in Vermont with our friend Bernie Sanders campaigning for him. And we were at a political event in Montpelier, the state capitol there, and a guy came up wearing a political button after our talk. And it's the best button I've ever seen. It said, wearing a button is not enough. <laughs> we can't be a nation of button wearers, can we? We've got to be a little bigger th than that. We've got to push back against the, the insolence of the police authorities, which are the political authorities that are pushing this down on us here in Tampa and up in Charlotte later on. We gotta push back against this narcissistic avarice and arrogance uh, in our economic uh, lives, knocking down the middle class, completely destroying the middle class, in fact. We gotta push back. We're the only force that's gonna push back. Nobody else is gonna push back. It's not gonna be some corporation, it's not gonna be some politician, it's not gonna be anybody. It's gotta be us. We've gotta push back. That's the importance of WMF to rally us to be the pushers, to do uh, the pushing back. And, and we won't win the first time out. We've, we've won a number of things. I was in uh, Wisconsin a year ago, February, in that great rally there. A hundred, yeah. Uh, 150,000 people, it was February, uh, 20 degrees, uh, snow on the ground. Uh, it, it was just my people coming from all around. Uh, as far as we were, the speaker's platform was up on the state capitol grounds and you could see three avenues down and people were coming from all of them. A tractorcade was going around the state capitol because farmers were standing with the workers. Uh, environmentalists were standing uh, with uh, uh, the, the labor was standing with, everybody was standing together. It was a tremendous show. And I looked down over here as I was talking and this woman had a handmade sign and it said, you screw us, we reproduce. <laughs> and that has to be our attitude. We grow stronger. The more they push, we grow stronger. We reproduce, we get, we get more. We build, we push back. Uh, and again, you're not gonna win it the first time out. They didn't win that fight in terms of defeating Walker, but they did win and forcing him into a recall that he had spent $40 million on with Coke money, had to admit who he was, and the Democrats took the state Senate as a result of that recall election. They don't tell you about that. But you keep pushing. My friend Willie Nelson put it to me like this once. He said, hi, Tara, the early bird might get the worm, but it's the second mouse that gets the cheese. <laughs> you might want to explain that to your neighbors. <laughs> you seem to get it there. And we've got to keep reaching out. You know, it, it, it's not just the, the, the obvious progressive forces who are out there. 
small business people increasingly are very, very progressive. Those farmers who sell at the farmers markets, they're incredibly progressive. Uh, the, the doctors, more and more women are the doctors. That's why it's become a more progressive force in our society. Evangelicals, there's an evangelical environmental movement. They, they don't call it environmentalism, they call it creation care, but who the hell cares what they call it? <laughs> it is what we're talking about. It's the same thing we're talking about. Don't shut anybody out. Reach out and expand. Some people say, well, it's like herding cats to try to get our side together. But you know, anybody who says you can't herd cats never tried a can opener. <laughs> They will come, won't they? So keep, keep pushing. Keep trusting your own values. Keep trusting the great strength that you have. Keep pushing out there. There's a great group here, a new trucking company that has begun. Peace. Peace uh, Transport. Transport. Peace Transport. They're a remarkable group. They, they, they came out of a failed truck company and they decided instead of just, you know, taking a payment and going on their way, they decided they might take over that truck company. And that's the attitude that built America. That's what's happening all across America. Co-op movements and et cetera. People taking charge of their own lives, politically, economically, religiously, healthcare, you know, all aspects. And Peace Transport is doing that. Uh, so I, I'll close with this thought because it is from a moving company. When DeMarco and I moved down to Austin, Texas in uh, 1976, uh, there was a moving company that was there. Uh, and they had an advertising slogan that I loved. Uh, so I stole it for political purposes. Uh, and it was just a little bitty outfit. I, I think it was a two-man, you know, two, two guys in a truck, you know, Skeeter and Booger, you know, something like that. And, but they had a slogan. They, they, they put it in the yellow pages. They had an advertising slogan that said, if we can get it loose, we can move it. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. Get it loose at the grassroots level, and the people will move it for themselves. Thank you so much for what you're doing. Thanks to Jimmy M and F. Jim Hightower. Ladies and gentlemen, just got word that red zone of the audience.